Hi, welcome back, I'm Eric Kane. I'm gonna talk a little bit today about Gamergate. Yay, my favorite subject. Gamergate always finds a way to pop back up in uh, you know video game blogs and Twitter and the social medias. Sometimes they find me and yell at me because I took a sort of as objective a stance as I could about the whole thing uh, back in the day. And apparently saying that harassment is bad, but that there are many causes for what we're seeing in Gamergate isn't strident enough for a lot of people. I was supposed to just shriek about how gamers are dead and uh, shit on my audience. <laughs> apparently that's what everyone was supposed to do back in the day if you wanted to be righteous enough. I don't like calls for righteousness. Like these sort of platitudinous half-baked bullshit measures people go through to sort of signal how how good and holy they are. I, I think most people are in the muck. I'm certainly in the muck, and it's nice down here in the muck. It was a hashtag. It was a lot of people in a lot of different places saying a lot of different things. There was no organization until later. But at this point in time, when Alexander published her piece, her Gamers Are Dead piece, there wasn't really much there. It was just a lot of angry people on the internet. Some YouTubers were stoking the flames. Um, but certainly, games media was stoking the flames as well. Because, you know, a couple dozen other publications picked up on that article. And then ran with that, with some version of Gamers Are Dead, We Don't Need Gamers, Gamers Suck, Gamers Are basement dwelling incels. I don't know if incel was in the lexicon just yet. But this, of course, was not designed to condemn harassment. This was designed to further the flame wars and to get clicks, hate clicks, right? Um, nobody writing the Gamers Are Dead articles was trying to help women in the gaming industry. That's bullshit. <laughs> this, if anything, made it worse for everybody. Uh, which at the time is what I said. I said, we need to stop, people need to stop publishing this shit. It's just making things worse. Um, because you're, you're, you're alienating people. You're, you're, you're making, you know, you're making these aggressive statements that of course are going to rile people up. And, and everyone from Lay Alexander to everyone else who published this in Kotaku and Polygon and everywhere else knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. I don't think it was as coordinated as some people claimed it was at the time. I think this was this is this thing we see all the time. People just are unoriginal and boring, so they just ape what other better writers are, are doing first. Leia Alexander is a great writer. I, she seems to be a very unhappy person, but she's a great writer. Uh, and a lot of lesser writers copied what she did, basically, and made their own Gamers Are Dead articles. Um, and certainly on the other side of, of things, there were YouTubers who I didn't really follow, but I, I saw, you know, I would see this or that from various YouTubers who were really, you know, making the whole, uh, Quinn and ex-boyfriend thing, the, Bur the five guys controversy, all that much bigger than it ever really needed to be. Everyone was stoking the flames and I was sitting there saying, okay, everybody calm down. Like this is. Let's look at this. Let's look at why this is going on. Let's look at what the history leading up to this moment shows us about anger in the gaming community towards the industry and especially the gaming press. Why? Let's, let's talk about why. That apparently made me a Gamer Gator. Even though I never once said I supported anything to do with Gamer Gate, I just wasn't going to go out and call all gamers, you know, incels and creeps and sexist and I wasn't going to agree and I never have agreed that Gamergate itself was just this coordinated att attack against women like nobody ever everyone who says this they, they say that this was a coordinated harassment campaign against women well, why who was coordinating this harassment campaign against women why specifically against women and why specifically then no one seems to have an answer for that they just say oh it was that's what it was it was a court okay how, how was it that? Certainly some, some very vocal women were involved and got harassed, especially on Twitter, right? But 
if you inject yourself into this conversation, you're going to get abuse online. That's just how the thing works. Have you ever worked the internet before? Do you know how it works? If I go onto Twitter and say, say something controversial or get into a fight with people who are very passionate about something, I'm going to get harassed. It's going to happen. <laughs> I just, I know this. And I mute people and I block people if I have to. I try not to, but I do. Because sometimes some people are just nasty people and I don't want to have anything to do with them. Life is too short. You can't really go into this debate, have a very strong opinion, get yelled at online and call it harassment. Why were suddenly all these gamers trying to drive women out of the industry? Just all women? This was the goal to drive all women out of gaming? That's preposterous. It's so preposterous. But people still parrot this line. Now, there were absolutely misogynistic, sexist assholes involved in this whole thing. But to say that this huge number of people who were f fucking mad about literally what they were saying, ethics in games journalism, to say that this huge swath of people were all trying to drive women out of games is crazy sauce. Um, and so in this, in this op-ed from Brendan Sinclair, he says, the industry's silence in the face of an obvious harassment campaign was a shameful mistake that continues to harm. And he goes on to sort of talk about how like the industry as in the companies like Activision and Blizzard and, I'm sorry, Activision, Blizzard and Take-Two International and, you know, EA and all these places. And, and he tosses some media like IGN and GameSpot into this uh, and Sony and yada, yada, yada. Um, they, were, they were all sort of wishy-washy. They didn't say, they didn't condemn what was going on enough. Well, here's the problem with that. At the time... It wasn't very clear what was going on. It's still not clear. Years later, nobody seems to agree on it. Uh, a lot of people said harassment is bad. And what else can you really say? Uh, troll sucker 99 on Twitter is mean. We condemn him. I mean, all these people are anonymous. Most, most of the people in Gamergate were just anonymous. People... You know, eventually we got people like Milo Yiannopoulos, who I think continued to just fan the flames of all that shit. You know, I I liked Milo on a personal level. You know, I talked with him a number of times. He's a nice guy. He's a troll, man. He was he was absolutely trolling the shit out of everybody. That's what he does. He's a, he's a shock jock guy, right? Like he he goes out and he stirs the pot and he says outrageous things to draw the hate of his of his targets they're not even his enemies he just likes to fuck with people and he went too far and it his own side threw him under the bus eventually it was the conservatives that canceled milo people were condemning milo i mean once this was more overtly political there was plenty of condemnation to go around but early on it wasn't quite as easy to see that especially for corporate boards who are so detached from this shit what are they going to do? Go look at this? And they're like, okay, wait a minute. Adam Baldwin made this hashtag Gamergate and now all these people are mad because of some story about a boyfriend who's jilted and, and, and people are worried that, you know, gaming press is giving good coverage for sex. Like, what are they going to... Like, once you look at all these details and then you're like, oh God, it's like Brianna Wu and, and all these people who are like saying they're getting harassed. Like, what? what why would you want to tread into that shit? Why would you want to go there? It's crazy. If I was a, a legal counsel to like Activision, or I would say, just don't even go there. Don't, just be quiet. Don't say anything. What possible good could this do for the company? <clears throat> alienate our... We should alienate gamers like the press is doing. That's not, that's not a good idea from a business perspective. Um, and so you get these milk-a-toast... Harassment is bad. But harassment is bad. We can all agree on that, except for harassers and fuck them, right? Um, the other problem here, the problem that I've pointed out recently when we when we saw the Bill Cosby room and we saw, you know, we've seen all these accusations come out in Ubisoft, Activision and elsewhere of harassment, of, of, uh, of harassment of women, of um, promoting 
or neglecting to promote women, uh, you know, putting, you know, all sorts of different accusations, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff in the industry that's come out in sort of the, the mini me too stuff that's come out in the video game industry. And these companies all had to fire people, people resigned. I mean, it's widespread, right? It's even in, in indie companies and beyond. And some of, you know, obviously there's some of it's probably bullshit, but a lot of it isn't. Uh, some of this stuff is clearly very bad. Well, the point is, this is real life stuff. This is actual people at a job in the industry being harassed or, or mistreated in some way. This is not an activist on Twitter getting pissed off and crying for about harassment because a bunch of random fucking trolls are being mean. I don't support the trolls being mean, but that is Twitter. Twitter is a nasty place. I don't recommend it. It's not, it's not ever been great, and it's not going to get great anytime soon. Um, the point is, the industry really shouldn't have come out and done anything, because at the time, when, when most of this was going on in this that, that Sinclair is discussing, uh, it's, it, you know, first of all, nobody knew what the hell was going on. Uh, second of all, all you could really say is that harassment is bad because there was nothing. There was just an anonymous group of people online in forums like 8chan and on Twitter, you know, a lot of them talking about ethics and games journalism. I mean, what, what exactly would these companies even say, right? Uh, can they really come out and apologize now for Gamergate? They should be apologizing for the actual things their companies have done to to ignore or sweep under the rug actual cases of real life abuse everyone makes such a big deal about gamergate like it was this harassment campaign that was you know you know what's much worse than a bunch of people using a, a hashtag is actual people in the industry being abusive assholes to women at these companies maybe that's what's driving women out of the gaming industry hmm Maybe that's where the real problem is, and you keep trying to make it about these gamer gators. And again, I'm not even trying to defend like what's, what some of these people said. It was there was terrible things said, but that's Twitter for you, man. Fans of like The Walking Dead have said worse things to me. <laughs> it's not a coordinated campaign to drive me out of the industry, um, although there have been those by many of the same people who wrote those Gamers Are Dead articles that fanned the flames of all this shit and made everyone more angry. I was once called a founder of the alt-right, <laughs> which is so funny to me, given my support for all kinds of socialist policies. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy, I tell you. So I'm not going to really read this article. I'll link to it. Uh, it's... Gamergate was a test for how much pushback a decentralized hate movement would receive when it wore a disguise as convincing as two children in a trench coat with a pair of Groucho Marx glasses. And this industry failed that test spectacularly. What could they have done differently? I mean, maybe at that point in time, they should have looked inward and said, we need to clear house, clean, out, clean house. We need, to, we need to find out who in our own organization might be contributing to a toxic workplace for our female employees. We need to look inward and, and see how maybe we can hire more, more women to work in, in these companies. But also acknowledge the fact that, that, more, that this is an industry that appeals to men and historically has appealed to men more than women. That's just true about gaming in general. It's true about the tech sector. Obviously, it's great if women want to be part of it and I think we should embrace welcoming anybody in. Uh, but... But we have to be realistic about, you know, it's like construct. No one ever talks about construction this way. Oh, the construction industry doesn't hire enough women. Women don't want to work in the construction industry. Should we make a, should we get activists out there to get more women hired to, to build, you know, office buildings and shit? Well, women don't want to do it. So <laughs> there are some women in construction, but of course construction isn't sexy. It's not as hot button as like the gaming industry where, where we have to have these this 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 you know mustache twirling villain who's who's causing women not to work there rather than just like human fucking nature uh obviously obviously more women are more into gaming now than ever before but i think most people would agree that that's okay 
I, I'm, I'm all for more women being involved in gaming. I, I don't know how many girlfriends I've had where I've just been like, I wish she played games. We could play games together. Like, that, that's, that would be awesome. But overall, my, many more of my guy friends are into gaming than girls. Um, and at the same time, I don't want people to come into this fandom, into gaming or comics or, or role-playing games, D&D, and say, we don't like it, so now it has to change to fit what we like. I want, I want them to come in and bring their own sensibilities. Yes, every, it's a great thing about D&D, anyone can play it any way they want to, right? But it doesn't have to just completely change to, 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 to cater to modern sensibilities. Everything changes. Change happens organically and gradually over time. That's normal and that's good. Uh, anyways, I'm sort of rambling at this point. Point being, uh, it has already been eight years since Gamergate. In an industry where the average career might not even la be that long, the next time a concentrated industry-wide harassment campaign comes, we cannot rely on there being enough people who are here in 2014 still around to guide a proper and coordinated response. I've got a really good idea. If something like this happens again, we should write a bunch of articles about how gamers are dead. That will surely calm everyone down and make everything better. All right. Thanks for watching. Peace.